On today's episode, the Chicago Blackhawks lose their sixth consecutive game, falling 2-0 to to the Seattle Kraken last night. But on the bright side, not only did Marion Hossa ink a one-day contract to retire as a member of the Blackhawks, but the team also announced that Hossa's number 81 sweater will be retired next season and is going to be hung up in the United Center rafters. Then, to wrap things up, I'll also go over some changes that are coming to the Blackhawks' season ticket program next year. All that and plenty more right here on Locked On Blackhawks. <laughs> Locked On Blackhawks, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome in to the Locked On Blackhawks podcast, your daily podcast on the Chicago Blackhawks. Today is Friday, April 8th. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2 or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And if you're listening to the audio version of today's show and you like what you're hearing, then please go and show some support first by following the podcast. It'll only take a quick couple of seconds, a quick click of the button will help me out tremendously. Go and leave the show five stars if you like what you're hearing today as well. And you can also go and leave me a review. And best of all, it's 100% for free wherever you may be listening to your podcast, whether that be through Apple Podcasts, Odyssey, Spotify, Google Podcasts, etc. It's all 100% for free. And if you go and follow the show right now, then you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And if you're not already watching the video version of today's episode, then definitely be sure to go and check out Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube because if you somehow haven't gotten the memo already, each and every episode moving forward, folks, is going to have a video version attached to it as well. So if you haven't done so yet, please go and subscribe to Locked On Blackhawks on YouTube. I recently just reached 100 subscribers. I greatly appreciate all the support, and I want to keep boosting those numbers up. So please go and subscribe to Lockdown Blackhawks. Go and smash the like button. Go and comment down below what your favorite Marion Hosa moment is of all time. And also be sure to turn on those push notifications so you can be notified when the episode is uploaded to YouTube each and every day. All right, good morning, everyone. And as always, thank you for tuning into another episode of Lockdown Blackhawks. Your one-stop shop for all things Chicago Blackhawks. And last night, the Chicago Blackhawks were back in action, taking on the Seattle Kraken, who are just one of the six teams that currently have fewer points in the standings than the Chicago Blackhawks do, just like Arizona on Sunday, and also like that game on Sunday against the Arizona Coyotes. The Blackhawks last night put up yet another discouraging performance overall. They squandered most of their prime scoring opportunities, went 0 for 4 on the power play, and wind up falling 2 to nothing to the Kraken, getting shut out for the eighth time this season. And for those of you who tuned into the episode yesterday, first off, thank you all so much for the support for those of you who did tune into yesterday's episode. Uh, but for those who missed it, um, then you missed out on my sort of dark thought that I had about the Chicago Blackhawks losing back-to-back games at home against two bad teams, both of which have fewer points in the standings than the Hawks do, which is kind of saying something when it's been this disastrous of a season. Uh, And of course, they were honoring two of the largest icons in franchise history in both of those games in Jonathan Taves and Patrick Kane. My dark thought was, While it's been a nightmare of a season, the real cherry on top would be losing back-to-back games at the UC, one of those coming against the Arizona Coyotes on Jonathan Taves' 1,000th game ceremony, and the other coming to the Seattle Kraken on Marion Hossa's retirement night. And well, folks, uh, it looks like my uh, nightmare of a situation that I thought uh, wound up coming true, and honestly, it was even worse than I imagined with the Blackhawks getting shut out last night Uh, to lose both of those games at the UC. It's like pouring salt in the wound at this point, right? Because 
Uh, we all know that the Blackhawks season is a lost cause at this point. Um, and it's been that way for the last two or three months now, if we're being honest. We knew this Blackhawks team wasn't going to be making the playoffs, but you would at least hope that they would come out with, you know, some sort of fight and, you know, some intensity and, and passion to honor not only their current captain, but also one of the best and most impactful players during the glory days, the dynasty era of the Chicago Blackhawks. And to see the way that this team played last night once again uh, against the Seattle Kraken of all teams, I mean, it was sad. And just go look, in, go look up and down the Seattle Kraken's lineup in their roster. Go look at it and tell me that it's not completely embarrassing for the Blackhawks to let that team really take control of the game, uh, especially in the early going. The Blackhawks were dreadful in the opening 20 minutes. The first shift was really solid. Patrick Kane got a great A scoring opportunity like 20 seconds into the game, but after that, it was all cracking throughout that first period. And in fact, uh, Seattle led 17 to three in shots on goal after that first period. The only reason the score was still tied, nothing, nothing was due to Kevin Lankin. And who, by the way, um, I thought performed really well last night, which was definitely nice to see him have that sort of bounce back performance and respond the way that he did after a couple of rough goes of it. Uh, in the last couple of weeks and in his past couple outings, Lankinen deserved better uh, than the loss that he earned last night. He kept the Blackhawks alive throughout the way, as I said, especially in that first period. Uh, but the offense in front of him completely let him down, just weren't able to get any real sustained pressure. But I think the most disappointing part of this offensive output last night, or this lack of offensive output, I guess I should say, was the five-on-three power play that the Blackhawks had late in the second period after finally getting some momentum on their side uh, in the second half of that middle frame. They get a two-man advantage for nearly two minutes, and they don't even end up recording a shot on goal. Just a whole lot of standing around, sloppy passing, which the, the passing last night overall was horrendous and this Blackhawks team I really think that's one of their biggest issues they just can't make tape to take passes and when they're in transition when they have a guy streaking up the ice with some speed it seems like they can never perfectly put it on his tape to give him that golden scoring opportunity uh, so the passing was really sloppy again last night it was definitely sloppy on that five on three man advantage and overall it was just kind of a whole lot of standing around right and everyone just kind of thinking the other guy is going to go and create the play. Um, so it, it was just super ugly overall. And uh, they wind up blowing not only that five on three, but the two minute power play that they had after that as well. Taylor Radish was cut on a high stick. So it was a four minute misconduct. Blackhawks blow the five on three and then they blow the two minute power play that came after it too. And then in the third period, um, on their fourth and final power play of the game, these were probably the Blackhawks' best scoring chances of the night. Patrick Kane and Seth Jones both have shots ring off the post about 10 seconds apart from each other, which was super frustrating and a super tough break there for the Blackhawks. Uh, but aside from that, they really didn't get any good looks at five on five throughout the way. And in that third period, uh, aside from that late power play, I just didn't think they came with a, a good enough push in order to claw their way back. And then giving up that um, second goal to Jordan Eberle with under two minutes to go. That was basically the dagger. All she wrote right when that hit the back of the net, nothing really Kevin Lankinen could do on that goal either. Um, kind of, got screened by Calvin DeHaan in front. The Blackhawks defensemen were just way too soft on that entry by Seattle into the offensive zone. So it didn't really matter at that point. The Blackhawks offense, I don't think, was going to tie this game up either way, whether it be one to nothing or two to nothing. It was just a, a really disappointing output from the Blackhawks offensively, especially on a night when they're honoring number 81, Marion Hosa. And after the game, Derek King was um, – about as ticked off as I've heard him all season long. He wasn't calling anyone out, you know, specifically by name or anything, uh, but he just kind of said there are way too many guys providing inconsistent compete levels right now. Not enough guys are showing that desperation 
that's needed late in the game in order to claw your way back and knock things up. Plays need to be executed late in the game at that point. Momentum should be on your side, and the Blackhawks just never really seem like they can get that late push, at least not consistently enough. Um, so I'm really curious to see um, in this next game, which is going to come on Sunday against the Dallas Stars, by the way, Pat Foley and Dale Talon are going to be rewinding the clock and are going to be the ones calling that game in the Blackhawks broadcast booth, which should be a super fun listen for Blackhawks fans out there. I think I'm going to be in attendance for that game, actually, though, so I personally may not be able to hear it, but for all you Blackhawks fans out there, I know it's tough to watch the Blackhawks at this point, but I would suggest to tune in for that one with Dale and Pat on the call because those two go way back and it should provide for quite a fun vintage moment on Sunday. But in that game against the Stars, I'm really curious to see uh, who's kind of going to be a healthy scratch or where guys are, are going to be in the lineup because I think that's going to kind of give us a better idea of who in particular uh, Derek King is talking about when he says the effort level and the compete levels aren't just there on a consistent basis right now. And one thing I wanted to mention, Blackhawks fans, one guy who, um, based on the ice time that he received right now, one guy who I kind of have a feeling is in Derek King's doghouse right now is defenseman Jake McCabe who got absolutely walked by Alex Wenberg on what wound up being the game-winning goal for the Kraken. And the reason I say this, the reason why I say I think McCabe is in the doghouse right now is because I went back, I looked at the box score, I looked at all the game logs and everything. Jake McCabe recorded just 14 minutes and 40 seconds of ice time last night. That's his third lowest on the entire season. And in comparison, Eric Gustafson, who... I've thought he's actually played rather well in these last two outings. I thought he had a good game on Sunday against Arizona, and I thought he had a pretty decent showing last night against Seattle as well. Uh, Gustafson finished with over 20 minutes of ice time last night, as did both Caleb and Seth Jones. So um, it just seemed like Derek King was wanting to play those guys more. Even Alex Vlasic got into double-digit minutes for the first time in his NHL career playing uh, just over 10 last night, which – I'm definitely an advocate for. I was really happy to hear Eddie Olchek kind of side with my opinion on the Alex Vlasic matter right now, which is, you know, let, let the kid play. And the biggest part of it is he gets to figure out, you know, what works, what doesn't, what he needs to work on, what he already understands. I think that's the biggest thing, not, you know, overall how he's faring. This kid just came right out of college. Like it's obviously going to be a little bit of a struggle for him, but I'm sure Alex understands that. And I just think it's such a good opportunity for him to gain knowledge of both his and the NHL game that he has to be getting playing opportunities when the Blackhawks season is already lost. So i um, curious though, to see that Derek King elected to give those four defensemen uh, some more ice time last night, rather than the Jake McCabe and Calvin DeHaan pairing. So Definitely going to be interesting to see who King is going to hold accountable in that game on Sunday against Dallas after Yet another disappointing result last night at the UC as the Blackhawks get blanked for the eighth time this season, which if I had to guess is right up there uh, at the top for the most in the entire NHL this season. All right, there are some thoughts on the Blackhawks with yet another frustrating defeat to the Seattle Kraken last night. Coming up in just a moment, I'm going to get into legend Marion Hossa getting his number 81 sweater retired next season. But first, I need to talk to you all about Bet Online. It's that time of the year again, folks, as baseball season is finally upon us. And how about the Cubbies with that victory yesterday in their home opener? It's baseball season, folks, and Bet Online has way more odds and info from game scores, totals, player performance props to where the next fired manager is going to land. Bet online remains your number one spot for sports betting here in 2022. And it's not just baseball from the NHL to the NBA boxing and UFC, right to your favorite Vegas casino games. Do not wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2022 season. Bet online is both the fastest and the easiest way to bet on all your favorite sports and Vegas casino games. Bet online where the game begins. All right, we're back here 
on the Locked On Blackhawks podcast. Getting into segment two now today, I also had to be sure to get into Marion Hosa, not only inking a one-day contract last night to retire as a member of the Blackhawks, but also the team announced that Hosa's number 81 sweater is going to be retired by the franchise next season, is going to be up in the United Center rafters. So while all the the on-the-ice stuff yesterday was about it as ugly as it could get, uh, there were a ton of awesome Marion Hosa moments throughout the course of this game. And as I already mentioned uh, on the show yesterday, Hosa signed this one-day contract in the atrium of the United Center with basically a packed house surrounding him and uh, Haas himself actually talked about this uh, when he was speaking with the media. He said that he was just kind of in awe, and it was truly incredible to see. Um, and it even got him a little teary-eyed seeing the support that uh, he still gets here in the city of Chicago after not being here for the past four years. Kind of crazy to think this was Hosa's um, first time, not last night, but um, with Jonathan Taze's 1,000th game ceremony. That was his first time back at the United Center in four years. So um, he said it, it was really cool and um, it just made him feel so honored and so proud for everything that he accomplished by seeing the, the amounts of people that showed up to watch him sign that one-day contract. Uh, so good on you, Blackhawks fans, by the way, for – showing up and packing the atrium for Marin Hosa as he deserves for the massive impact that he played in the dynasty era of the Chicago Blackhawks. And another well-deserving moment came for Hosa when the team announced that he will become the eighth member in Blackhawks franchise history to have their number retired up in the rafters. Hosa is going to be joining Glenn Hall, Pierre Pullout, uh, Keith Magnuson, Dennis Savard, Stan Makita, uh, Bobby Hall and Tony Esposito in getting their numbers retired by the organization. And of course, Hosa is the first of his era to receive this honor from the Hawks. And when I saw that Hosa will be getting his number retired, that had me thinking about who else from the Stanley Cup days are going to be joining him in the future. Now, we know that Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, Duncan Keith and Brent Seabrook, they all seem relatively obvious at this point, but I'm really interested to see if guys like Patrick Sharp, Nicholas Jomerson, and Corey Crawford are going to be joining them in the future. Um, and I, I really, it's, it's such a tough decision, I think, from the organization because now that you've made HOSA, now that you've given HOSA this honor, it feels like it opens the door for more, right? But at the same time, you still want it to be exclusive. You don't want just anyone to be receiving this honor. And I'm not saying that, you know, guys like Patrick Sharp, Nicholas Jalmerson, and Corey Crawford don't deserve it, but they certainly don't have as much of a case as the big four. And also probably Marion Hosa has a bigger impact than any of those. Uh, if I had to guess... Um, I would imagine that Jalmerson is probably going to be an odd man out. Also, one thing to consider is that he returned to the United Center earlier this year, and there kind of was no mention of the number four jersey being retired in the future. They did put together, you know, a good video montage for him. But I think by not really bringing up that topic, I'm going to guess Jalmerson is probably going to be an odd man out. Um, but, you know, even if he doesn't get his sweater retired, the true Blackhawks fans will know how much of an impact Jalmerson played on those teams. The Blackhawks don't win three Stanley Cups without Nicholas Jalmerson's effort level and selflessness night in and night out. I mean, that I, I don't see it getting done without Nicholas Jalmerson. He was seriously that good. One of the most underappreciated players, not only in Blackhawks history, but I think in NHL history as well. Um, but as for Sharp and Crawford, I think those two probably have a better shot than Hammer does in particular. I'd probably give Patrick Sharp the edge over Corey Crawford. Uh, Crow is another guy who all the true Blackhawks fans know how much of an impact that he played and how great he was in that. Uh, he, the Blackhawks don't win those two, two Stanley Cups without him. Uh, 2013, go back and look at Corey Crawford's numbers in the 2013 postseason. He had a save percentage above 920, a goals against average below two, 
He was the rock for the Blackhawks in that year. 2015, I think, was a little bit different. I thought that team was just, me and my friends said it the whole year, this team's simply too good not to win the Stanley Cup. Now, Corey Crawford certainly still had to do his part in that, and he still stole a ton of games for them. Um, but I think that 2015 team was a little bit different than 2013 in terms of how crucial the goaltender meant. Um, but for Crawford, I mean, even after the glory days of the Blackhawks, he was still incredible, uh, e even going through a ton of concussion problems and a bunch of injuries. Every time he was healthy, he was really solid and, and never really had troubles unless you're one of those fans who blames the goaltender for everything. I still don't understand how there are people out there who don't appreciate what Corey Crawford did. It's actually mind blowing. And uh, let me tell you, Blackhawks fans, you're going to appreciate Corey Crawford even more when you see the nightmare that's probably going to be a net for this team in the next couple of seasons. Uh, but for Patrick Sharp, I did want to say being a three time Stanley Cup champion, you know, who had quite a lengthy tenure here in Chicago, even before the team started to get really good. I think he probably has the best chance of those three guys that I just named, but I still don't think it's a lock by any means either. So I'm really curious to see how this is all going to play out who or um, how the Blackhawks are going to go about all of this. Um, but by giving Marion Hosa a spot up in the rafters, that definitely opened things up a little bit more in terms of other guys potentially joining the big four of Patrick Kane, Jonathan Taves, Duncan Keith, and Brent Seabrook. Also, one quick note I had to mention, folks, this is very important. During that media session that Marion Hosa had last night, he did mention that he's currently working with the Blackhawks to figure out some kind of front office role for him moving forward, which I know is going to make a ton of Blackhawks fans out there incredibly happy and probably also would uh, instill a little bit more trust back in the organization, knowing that a guy like Hosa uh, would be around and would also have a say in things going forward. So uh, hopefully that will all come to fruition here in the next couple of weeks. I'm really excited to hear. I'm assuming this is going to get done. So I'm really excited to hear what kind of role they have carved out for Hosa there in that front office. And I know a lot of people are going to be ecstatic to hear that Hosa really, it sounds like he's going to be joining the Blackhawks front office, at least in some capacity in the future. All right. There are some thoughts on, Marion Hosa's retirement ceremony last night, sad. It came in a 2-0 defeat to the hands of the Kraken. But coming up in just a minute, I will get into the Blackhawks announcing a few changes to their season ticket plans starting next season. Welcome back to the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. Moving on into segment three, before I wrap things up and let you all go enjoy your Fridays, before I get back to watching the Masters, I got to see... Tyga Woods, who shot one under par yesterday, beating eight of the top 12 players in the world in round one at Augusta National. I got to see what Tiger's got in store for us in day two. But before I do that, folks, I wanted to be sure to also quickly get into some of the season ticket changes that the Blackhawks are making for next season, which I'm sure is also going to make uh, a handful of fans out there. I don't know how many listeners actually have season ticket plans. But for those who do, I know it's going to make them very happy when they hear this because uh, according to Jamie Spencer, who is the new vice president of revenue in the Blackhawks organization, uh, according to Spencer, based on some fan feedback and got a hair in my mouth, that's always fun. So based on some fan feedback and um, a, a comprehensive market study, I don't know, things are above my level. Uh, but according to those things, some changes needed to be made at the UC regarding pricing and such for the season ticket holders. So moving forward next season, 93% of seats at the United Center are going to uh, are, are not going to see an increase. 93% will not see an increase. And 83% will actually see a decrease with some of those tickets getting reduced by as much as 20%, which considering the direction that the team is heading in, uh, this only makes sense because um, Blackhawks fans next few years, uh, I'm pretty positive they're not going to be wanting to pay a premium dollar to go watch a rebuilding hockey team. So um, that's something that I think absolutely needed to be done. Even 
throughout the stretch of this season, I'm actually going to go look on the Game Time app right now. Game Time, come on, go and sponsor me. I use Game Time all the time. Game Time all the time. That could be a great motto. I'm already preaching for them. Okay, tickets are, are starting to get cheaper now, but f- after the All-Star game there for like a month or two, randomly ticket prices were going back up at the UC, and I know we've had a lot of cool moments as of late that have definitely impacted that. Jonathan Taves' 1,000th game ceremony, Marion Hosa's retirement night. There's been a lot of those sorts of things here recently, but I just found it weird how the prices were going up when the Blackhawks' chances of making the playoffs were going like this. It didn't really make a whole lot of sense. So um, obviously this, I think, was something that needed to be done to ensure that fans still come out and consistently support this hockey team. Um, But not only with uh, drops in ticket prices, there's also going to be the ability to swap tickets for certain games. Fans are going to be able to contact their uh, independent ticket department or whatever method they use to get the tickets. And they're going to be able to uh, talk to a ticket rep and exchange a game from their package for another one in a future date. So it kind of allows you to be a little more selective and what games you want to go see. There's also apparently going to be some new member perks, by the way, I think they're called season ticket member packages. Now you're officially going to be a member of the Blackhawks community if you sign up for season tickets. Uh, But those member perks are also going to include discounted food, discounted merchandise, and also some gifts from time to time, I guess, if you show up to the United Center and give some support to the lowly Chicago Blackhawks. Um, But mostly here, this isn't I mean, I'm not a season ticket holder, so this isn't really going to affect me too much. I know I'm sure there's some listeners out there who this is going to be affecting, and they're going, cha-ching, baby, I get to save some Skrilla. Uh, But most importantly here, I I just like to see the recognition from the franchise that they're going to need to do more to make sure folks are consistently coming to the United Center. Uh, They recognize that it's going to be difficult. This is going to be a process. But I think the way that you keep fans enticed is by offering stuff like this, dropping those ticket prices, and being open and honest. And that's what I like what Kyle Davidson and this uh, business side of the front office has has been doing so far. They've been open with most things um, with what we've seen so far, and that has to continue for this fan base, I think, to kind of buy back in, understand what they're doing here, and really, most importantly, have some belief that things are going in the correct direction. Um, And also, one thing that I thought was cool was to see that uh, Jamie Spencer kind of talked about how he understands there's two kinds of fans out there, right? There are fans who come to the game because of their prime seating locations and don't really care who the opponent is. And then there's other fans who simply don't care where they sit. They just want to see certain games against certain opponents. So recognizing that, you know, that at least makes me happy that they're kind of getting the business side of things and offering more options for Blackhawks season ticket holders. If you don't want to come to this game, cool. We can swap it out and you can go to another one at a future date, which is more convenient for your schedule. Or if you want to see a game against the old-time rival Detroit Red Wings, you'll be able to swap out a game and be able to go to that one. You just might do, might move back a little bit if you don't care about your seats. Who cares? You know, that's not the end of the world. So um, I, I'm glad to hear that these sort of changes are being made or these sort of new ways of going about things are being implemented uh, because – The on-ice play, that's not what's going to be getting fans coming to the United Center in the next couple of years. Uh, They're only going to be keeping the UC relatively full by A, like I said, most importantly, dropping those ticket prices. Uh, And also, I think, you know, doing other such things like uh, giveaways, not just to season ticket holders, but to first 10,000 fans, that's going to keep people enticed, I think. And for the season ticket holders, you know, offering discounted food, discounted merchandise, free gifts, sometimes even free merchandise. That's definitely going to make people want to come a little bit more than I'm sure they will if it was just to come and watch the Blackhawks play. Um, And, you know, if they don't do those type of things, the UC is going to be a ghost town these next couple of years. And uh, that would just be sad to watch happen to this type of original six franchise. I really hope that never happens here in Chicago ever again, where the United Center is halfway full there were some games earlier on in the season I remember I went to the game 
that was, I forget who it was against. I've been to so many games this year. I can't even remember anymore. Um, I can't remember who it was against, but it was the saddest crowd I've literally ever seen at the United Center. It was the day, at, uh, the same day, actually, the same night, a couple hours after Kyle Beach had that such a brave interview with TSN where he really opened up and answered a ton of questions from Rick Westhead. Um, and the, the United Center after that was literally as empty as I've ever seen it in person. Now, you know, 2006, I was nine years old. I don't really remember the crowds all that well. Um, but yeah, it, it was sad to see. And I really hope that's not the future here in Chicago. It can't happen here in Chicago, not to an original six franchise, not to a city who, when things are going well, fans care more so maybe than any other city in the United States. So um definitely glad to hear that some changes are coming in the season to season ticket department for next season and i hope that'll at least help keep the uc relatively full while the blackhawks are going through this rebuilding process for the next handful of years all right folks i think that is going to wrap up oh excuse me i got a hiccup i think that is going to wrap up friday april 8th episode of locked on blackhawks thank you again for tuning into the show and be sure to go and follow locked on blackhawks and go and subscribe on YouTube and you'll be able to get the latest episode as soon as it comes out each day. And after the show, be sure to go and check out Lockdown Fantasy Hockey as host Steel Roden and Flip Livingstone are going to help you become the expert of your fantasy league. It's free and available on all platforms. So be sure to check out Lockdown Fantasy Hockey right now, wherever you get your podcasts. Once again, thank you for tuning into today's episode. I'm your host, Jack Bushman. You can find me out on Twitter at Jack Bushman 2, or you could also go and check out my Strictly Blackhawks account at Talk and Hockey for all the latest Blackhawks news and updates. And for any questions at all regarding anything related to the show, feel free to email lockdownblackhawks at gmail.com. You can also hit me on any one of my Twitter accounts, or you can call 708 653 0572 to leave a voicemail. So until the next episode, thanks again for tuning into the Lockdown Blackhawks podcast, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.